Let's bring Dr. Amesh Adalja in. He's an infectious disease specialist, specialist and senior scholar at Johns Hopkins and joins us here in the studio in New York. So it's great to see you here in, in person. We've had you on remote so many times. And um, this has become a big story, particularly in Florida, because the state surgeon general there has been kind of defying, not kind of, he has been defying the CDC guidelines on measles. People, kids are supposed to stay home, right, if they're exposed for like three weeks, and he's not enforcing that, I guess. Exactly. What we want is individuals who are contagious to stay home, and we also want the unvaccinated individuals that might be at a given school. And some kids are too young to be vaccinated or might be immunocompromised. We want them to be given guidance that they need to stay away until this outbreak is over. And we've had measles outbreaks in the past. Other years have been even worse. But what we don't have is people kind of flouting science-based guidance. Now, the, as I said, it's the state surgeon general, they have a surgeon general in the state of Florida, writes a letter to parents. Let's put up the letter, guys, on the screen. I'll read part of it here. It's just saying, due to the high immunity rate in the community, as well as the burden of families and educational cost of healthy children missing school, DOH, so the Department of Health, is deferring to parents or guardians to make decisions about school attendance. It's very popular in conservative circles to say, let's put the power with the parents. But you're saying that the science doesn't back that up. <laughs> This is a recipe for that outbreak to get even larger and become more costly. Even though there is a high level of immunity in the population because most children in Florida are vaccinated, this is the most contagious disease known to humankind. Right. And you need to have vaccination levels above 95% to keep it at bay. If you've got unvaccinated individuals mixing with people that might be contagious or infectious, the virus is going to find them and they're going to then spread to more people and more people and the outbreak gets bigger and bigger and more costly to control. So mm -hmm. this recipe is that he's actually advocating is one that's going to make Florida less safe and cost the health department and cost taxpayers so more to control. The children should stay on three weeks. That's the guidance, right? If they're exposed. So even if some other child in their classroom, I think that's what exposure means, um, is, you know, has measles, so you stay home for three weeks until the outbreak is is quenched and if you're it's this is for the unvaccinated kid if you're a vaccinated child n these these cases don't really pose a risk to you it's right. for the unvaccinated individuals that need to stay away until that threat is gone and if they've been exposed they might actually pop up and become contagious themselves with the case and they could spread it to other individuals now it's not just florida as we said um in the introduction there there are other states where we're seeing measles cases going up but what's the perspective on that are they going up much more than we've seen in other years is it comparable to other years what you know we don't want to be alarmist about this. So is it measles making a comeback? I mean, how bad is it? We've had, we certainly had worse years. 2019, we had a major outbreak right here in the New York and New Jersey area, right. uh, over 1,000 cases. Back in 2014, we had a major outbreak linked to Disneyland with over 600 cases. So we've seen bigger years. But what's worrisome about this trend is that this is the anti-vaccine movement on steroids after COVID-19, where they've taken their misinformation on COVID-19 vaccines and metastasized it into measles. And we have higher rates of exemptions in students right now uh, for, for vaccine requirements to enter school. That's the recipe, that's a recipe for for allowing measles to spread. And, and we may get more, we're gonna get more cases. It may not be the worst mm -hmm. case on record, but this is all preventable. We've got a safe and effective vaccine that's been available since the 1960s. The thing for me as a non-doctor looking in on all of this, but having covered, you know, and we've, you and I have talked about COVID for years and years, the vaccine controversy and back and forth there, you could understand how people would have questions about a new vaccine. I'm not saying necessarily that their position is correct, but you could understand, well, you know, we, this is a new vaccine. We have a lot of questions about this. We don't trust it. We want to look into it more. So that's the position for some people. But in this case, is there any reason to question a measles vaccine at all? No, this is a vaccine that's been around since the 1960s that was responsible for the elimination of measles from not just nor from North America, but also South America. What's happened is that there's been a lot of flawed studies that got a lot of press on links between autism that have been completely debunked and completely retracted those studies that were shown to be fraudulent. But that's kind of gotten its own life in the anti-vaccine movement. And individuals like RFK Jr. continue to, to promote this idea that's been debunked. It's completely right. false and but, arbitrary. But there's nothing to any of that. No, right? there's no. nothing to it at all. So uh, it's interesting to watch the effect of it, though, because there's a real effect when people stay home uh, or, or don't stay home when they're supposed to, when these guidance uh, are put out. So we'll see how it goes in Florida. It's good to see you, by the way, in person. So Thanks, hopefully we'll have you on uh, more of these stories. Dr. Amos Adalja from Johns Hopkins.